What now? Sir Guy muttered as he strode up the slight rise from the stables. The servant who'd brought the message had been no help. All I know is my lord the Earl wants to see you, and he said I'd best make haste to find you. Sir Guy was a big man, tall, when he stood beside his sixteen hands destria, the top of his head rose above the horse's withers, tall and well-muscled. In full armour and with his home in place, he was an imposing figure even before he cradled his lance and began the charge toward his opponent. Gossip among the squires said more than one opponent had veered away at the last minute to avoid a direct hit on the shield arm or the breastplate. Better to be unhorsed by a glancing blow and live to joust another day than to lose everything in the lists, or so the gossip said. Making his way past the keep, Guy entered the leftmost of the two new buildings in the castle compound. New being relative, of course. They were built when King John added the outer wall and expanded the mere, making Kenilworth well-nigh impregnable. It was said that Henry III had undertaken some refurbishments when he took the castle back from Simon de Montfort after the siege in 1266. But it was Thomas, the present Earl's predecessor, who was responsible for its current luxurious furnishings. And it was into the Earl's own presence chamber that Sir Guy was shown. Ah, oh, bigger stuff. They found you quickly, I see. Seated at his writing table, the Earl acknowledged his visitor, then rummaged among the papers in front of him, finally finding the right one and proffering it to Guy. Read that. My dear Lancaster, our hopes have been dashed that the difficulties attendant on an attempted assault on Kenilworth would be sufficient to discourage those who might seek to free the personage we gave into your charge. Though we are grateful for your success in repelling the efforts of the Dominican and his brother, it now seems prudent to remove your charge to a different location. Two days before Palm Sunday, you may expect the arrival of our well-beloved Lord Barclay and his companion, Sir John Maltravers. They are under orders to take custody of the aforementioned personage and convey him to his new permanent lodgings at Barclay Castle. The men-at-arms who serve you as his guards are hereby ordered to render that service to Barclay and Maltravers for as long as those two shall deem necessary. As from Palm Sunday, your stipend for the care and comfort of said personage is revoked, but you retain all other rights heretofore granted you by the Crown. Isabella R. Affixed to the message was the King's privy seal. Finished reading, Sir Guy handed back the page without comment. It seems I'm to be relieved of responsibility for the prisoner, said Lancaster. Not a moment too soon for my liking. Let Barclay have him. The Earl folded the page and stowed it in a drawer of his table, and all the problems that come with being both host and jailer. He rose from his chair and began pacing to and fro in front of the hearth. Comfortable captivity, he snorted. He's comfortable, but I'm the one who feels like a captive. But at least, sir, you're free to come. Sir Guy ventured to offer reassurance, but Lancaster cut him off. 